Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I've got a time lapse based on another Pixel Dailies art prompt. I was scrolling through Twitter on Friday and I saw that the theme for the day was workshop. And I thought that'd be a fun environment to make. Uh, and in fact, just last week, I made sort of an exterior of a workshop in my isometric practice video. So that idea was still kind of fresh in my mind. I was trying to think if I had any existing characters who might require a workshop. And I remembered a while back, I had created this little frog character with goggles, or froggles if you will. Uh, and I imagined them being kind of like a mechanic or an inventor of sorts. Not that it really mattered for that piece where I'd made them originally, uh, but it was sort of just this brief character idea that I had in mind when designing that tiny sprite. So my plan here was to revisit that top-down style from that piece and create some kind of workshop for this little frog. One of the main focal point things that I wanted to have in this workshop was sort of a large mech suit. Uh, not just because I thought it'd be fun to explore within this style, but also because it ties together with the theme of my shop from that isometric video from last week. So it's almost like getting to see the interior of that place now, uh, just kind of with this totally different spin on it. To design the mech suit, I started by dropping down a rough silhouette using a larger pencil size, and then slowly began erasing from that to find a few of the prominent areas of the design. With the top-down perspective, it's important to think about how objects will skew based on how you're viewing them from slightly above as opposed to head-on. And a lot of times I try to just visualize the object in 3D, kind of as if I'm holding it in my hand. And then consider, you know, if I rotated it to where I'd be viewing it from above, which parts of it would get closer to me and which would get further away. It helps when there's a lot of layered points of reference on that object, uh, like the mech here, where we can kind of tuck the legs under a bit and you know, have the feet wrapped towards the back. And then there's also the face there, it's just kind of sitting towards the bottom of the head. Once I had that main mech suit in place, I just wanted to fill out the space in two distinct ways. Uh, the area around the mech is gonna be kind of the main workshop area with just a bunch of random tools and supplies and stuff like that. And then the area off to the right, which was kind of up the stairs, is gonna be sort of like this little loft that's more of a living space. One of the fun things about making this piece was just getting to jump back into this style. Uh, not just the top-down perspective, but sort of this small scale and cartoony appearance of this work. I feel like a lot of times my actual style kind of varies from piece to piece. So to try to create something that fits within the original vision of some random existing artwork of mine, you know, from however many months ago, uh, I just kind of referred back to that piece while making this to make sure that some of the construction was the same. Of course, this is why I find it's important to be mindful of the workflow you use when approaching a certain piece or style of work. For this one in particular, I'm working through all the line work first before adding color and shading, uh, which is probably the most common thing shared between the various types of pixel art that I make, uh, at least for those that use line work heavily like this anyway. The canvas size for this piece is 200 by 180 pixels, and then the room itself occupies a space of about 150 by 100. This is a little smaller than the canvas size of the original piece in this series, uh, which was 256 by 224, but I felt like bringing it down just a little bit since the workshop didn't need to take up as much space as the full town map itself. Uh, usually in a top-down RPG, the buildings are bigger on the inside than they appear from the town map, uh, just for the efficiency of it, so it kind of goes with that overall idea. So at this point, I'm adding solid color into the outlines, and this palette is just the one from that first piece. Again, just for more cohesion between the two artworks. And a lot of the color decisions here are fairly random. I'm really just trying to evenly spread the various colors throughout the artwork so that it's just really colorful throughout. After getting the flat colors in, I did a few laps to apply the shading. And for top down, I like to shade it as if the light source is coming from almost directly above, uh, as that just kind of makes sense and usually helps for the clarity. So in applying the shading to these objects, the highlight color will be on the top face, and then the front face of that object will be just kind of one shade darker than that. In some instances, I also remove the black outline separating the top and the front of the object, just to help soften those edges a little bit. And in a lot of cases, actually, I've also removed the outline from the bottom of the object, which I think helps with the appearance that it's sitting directly on the ground. The other thing that really sells this effect though, is just adding a slight shadow underneath everything. And I'm not using like long cast shadows either, uh, just something really small, like a couple of pixels or whatever. Almost as if the sun or the lighting is kind of right above, like at, at high noon, right? <laughs> uh, 
Once you go around and give this treatment to every little object in the piece, it has this additive effect that when you look at the piece as a whole, definitely reinforces the perspective and that lighting in a big way. The final addition here was to make a small portrait with some dialogue. It just kind of felt like a good way to wrap the scene up. Because I haven't done a portrait within this style or setting before, it did give a lot of freedom to just kind of explore and see what happened. The portrait space here is about 24, 25 pixels, and I just sort of created a rough character design by extrapolating the idea of the existing sprite, which, you know, doesn't have a lot of detail to go from, but I kind of had a rough idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like, so I just kind of freestyled something. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the final artwork for Froggle's Workshop. Here we go. All right, some late additions here were obviously the bit of animation just to give some life to the piece. And then there's also these miniature frog robots to infuse some more theme into the environment. And let's roll on through to see our tea time to close this out. Uh, thanks for joining me on this Pixel Dailies prompt and be sure to check them out on Twitter if you're ever looking for random ideas of what to make. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.